Peony, also known as the Rose Without Thorns, is an ex-gym leader, ex-champion, extremely good father figure. After stepping away from his role as champion, Peony now does normal father things like sewing clothes, planning cringy vacations based on the random stuff he saw on TV, and anything else he can think of to put a smile on his angsty teenage daughter's face. But what if his sweet little girl were to say something like, oh, the champion is pretty cool? Then Peony would have no choice but to go and redo the Gala Gym Challenge, try his level best to retake that champion title. But could he actually pull that off. Could Peony actually become champion again? To find out, I played through Pokemon Sword as the Jazzy Man himself, filling out his team as I go along. The first Pokemon being Eren. Wait a minute! Why Eren, you may ask? Isn't Qfant, Peony, and Rose's canonical starter? Well, apart from giving myself some early game variety in preparation of the eventual Rose run, I chose Eren because Eren is only available in the Crown Tundra, and Game Freak forgot to add scaling to that area. So if I don't want an overpowered team at any point in the game, I needed to do the scaling myself. And uh, that means Egg. The second Pokemon on Peony's team would be Meowth. If only I could get to it, because as it turns out, even with the provisional score bunny, Peony couldn't get through that bead fight in the Galar Mines. Since I only get 2 tries per battle, I had to think carefully about my next move. Running into a rematch that leads to a loss would instantly make Peony the weakest challenger in the Can X Become Champion series. Hey, what about that Marnie girl? She got stuck here too! Yes, but Team Yell secretly had Marnie's back, delaying everyone else's progress until she could make her way through. You don't got that kind of time, my dude. Anyways, uh, I did what every plot armor blacksmith would do and uh, sent Peony on a little detour. After quickly beating up Clara in the Isle of Armor, Peony goes to visit another Pokedad, the Diggin' Pond near the Training Lowlands, which is also where you can catch a Scyther. Uh, for some reason though, I forgot that wandering Pokemon and overworld spawns have different levels, so I accidentally ran into a bunch of level 30 Scythers that I couldn't even try to catch, until finally finding something around my level. I also learned that Scyther has a pretty low catch rate and wasted all of my Pokeballs only to not catch this one Pokemon. So I kinda rage quit and reset the game and tried over and over again until I eventually caught one. And of course, it had the wrong ability. <sighs> Instead of suffering through that again, I decided to make my way to the Crown Tundra to grab Peony's proper outfit and also farm a bunch of Dianite ore so I can buy an ability capsule. Was this the smart choice? No. But it is the knuckleheaded choice someone as passionate as Peony would make. And now we have enough overleveled legendaries to guarantee that we can become champion. It's time to get back to bead. Chop chop chop. This dude's more angsty than Nia. Okay, now we can catch a Meowth and make her way to the first gym. Chop chop. Haha, so far so good. Good. That Scyther was very much worth it, although something tells me it won't be as useful against Nessa. Meowth leads the battle with, uh, Scyther help! With a lucky crit hit, our main carrier was able to take out both of Nessa's fishies, leaving her with the dreaded Dredna. Ah, uh, I get the name now. Scyther uses one turn to set up Leer, while Nessa sets up Rain, which means bye bye Scyther. I then maxed Eren and used Max Guard to stall out her last turn of bonus HP, then attacked with a Max Rockfall. The plan here was to remove the Rain and hope that Eren would out speed. Eren didn't outspeed. So, uh, as it turns out, Peony can't do anything against Nessa with his current team. I even went TR hunting in the hopes of getting something useful, like Seed Bomb. You'd think Seed Bomb would be a good move against the water type gym, right? Wrong! Nessa doesn't care what you think, she just wins! Which also means that Peony, just like 90% of other trainers in Galar, could not become champion because of Nessa. This is ultra mega sad! If I can't become the champion, does this also mean I can't become the world's coolest dad? Is there truly nothing I can do here, little lad? Ah, uh, alright, alright. For you, Peony, I'll fudge the rules a little bit. Technically, you can beat Nessa, you just need to switch your team order a bit. Save that Meowth for last, and then spam Seed Bomb to pass. Although if you lose again, that's it, my man. Which is a bit worrisome considering Fireman Kabu is next. And our Steel types are very much weak against his fire. Thankfully, Scyther is able to do some decent damage even after it gets intimidated and burned. <laughs> Who am I kidding? At this point, we barely do anything! So I used Scyther's last turn to set up a Leer and lowered Arcanine's defenses. Things weren't looking too hot for me, never mind. But still, my Max Rockfall failed to knock out Arcanine in one turn. Since it had just a tiny bit of health left, I used Max Knuckle to finish it off and return my attack stat back to normal. Kabu sent out his final Pokemon and attacked first with a Max Antiferno, which somehow it didn't do that much damage. Neither did my Max Rockfall. Eh, 
and our Dynamax is done. Having accepted the feed, I button mashed and watched as the AI chose to use GMAX Flutterby? Effectively throwing the battle. Still a window. We needed to cool off a bit after that heated battle, so Peeny took a stroll in the snow and cut himself a Q-Fan to near Bridge Field. He also went to the giant seat to grab a Bronzor, but as it turns out, this area that is very much accessible from the start of the game has more overleveled Pokemon than Bridge Field, which you don't get prompted to explore until after you have 3 gym badges. Anyways, with our full team completed, we made our way to Stoneside where we face off against B. Scyther, or should I say Scyzor, carries the majority of the fight up until Machamp, where Eren stalls out the Dynamax and Q-Fan finishes off the fight. It looks like B is gonna have to train a bit more before trying to become champion. In the spirit of Adventor, Peeny gets lost in the Glimwood Tango, but at least the rest of his team ends up evolving while fighting off wild imps, and he finds the TM for U-Turn, which will allow Berserker to dip out a battle if it needed to, like during that Nessa fight. This lets me send out something more sturdy like Bronzong into battle and let it stack on trivia based stat boost during the fight against Opal, allowing Bluebell, not a sponsor, to solo the fairy type gym by spamming Flash Cannon. So uh, team ice cream or team cake? And no, ice cream cake is not an option. While you deliberate on that choice in the comments below, Pini goes to a nice cold place that he likes, and also happens to be the best guess on where his gym used to be before he became champion, Sir Chester. Since this is Pokemon Sword, we'll be fighting Gordy and his rock types. Somehow our 4 times effective seed bomb still doesn't do enough damage to the Barbaco, which takes out Berserker using Nessa's signature Razor Shell. The rest of Gordy's team wasn't much trouble for Scizor and its technician bullet punches, leaving Gordy with just his Gigantamax Colossal, which very quickly starts to flatten my team. Thankfully I land a critical hit with La Iron, and Bronzong is heatproof, so I managed to win another gym battle without having to mention the elephant in the room. I was hoping to get just as lucky against Piers, but between the Intimidates, Fake Outs and Pocket Sand, Berserker couldn't do much. Scizor was pretty useful with its 4 times effective hit on Malamar, but got obliterated by a counter from Obstagoon. La Iron and Bronzong couldn't do much against Guntank, so Peony finally got to use Copperaja in battle for the 1 second it took to knock out Pierce's last Pokemon. And this left just Raihan, who is there to test Peony's capability in double battles. Berserker and Bronzong teamed up to take down Gigalith as fast as possible since it knows a fighting type move. And then they did the same against Sandaconda who knows Earth Power. Sadly they failed to do enough damage this time and both of them got knocked out the next turn. Sizer went after Flygon while Agron drew Aggro from Duraldon. <laughs> Just kidding, aggro is not a mechanic in Pokemon games. I just got lucky with the AI's targeting. Although I don't know how lucky it is to have your foe get a triple attack boost. Thankfully, Raihan's Dynamax ran out, so Copper Raja could easily finish off the fight. Our adventure continues as Peeny makes his way through the icy Route 10, running into all sorts of trainers, some of which tell him some silly legends, like how Galar is doomed if Corviknight ever disappears. So says the cab guy who also carries a Flygon just in case his Corviknight does disappear. Once I finally got to Winden, I began to think about just how many battles I had to do here. There's Marnie, Hob, Oleana, B, Nessa, B, Raihan, Rose, and finally Leon. As much as I like the tournament arc setup, part of me prefers having less people to fight at the very end. Or maybe a bit more of a challenge? Marnie's team got nearly swept by Scizor, and Hob could barely hold his own against Bronzong. Now, Oleana? She would make a good Elite 4 trainer. Her Frost Last causes more trouble than Kabu by not only setting your Pokemon on fire, but then hitting it with a powerful head which does double damage if the target has a status condition, like burned. Her Milotic is also pretty bulky and has tons of recovery moves just to annoy the heck out of you, and her Garbodor's weak armor ability allows it to start attacking first, which could turn the tides in a battle. Could she? Uh, another time. Having passed the semi-finals, Peeny gets to move on to the next round of the tournament arc, where he now has to take on the gym leaders again. Okay, so was it just me, or is this not how typical semi-finals and finals work? I thought it would be something more like this, just two battles, not seven. Anyways, Peeny completely steamrolls B, B, and Nessa since he has enough of a type advantage in his move pool, which left Raihan as the only real challenge here. He starts out the battle with a sunny day Torkoal and that is gonna be a problem. Agron is the only Pokemon I had that could pack enough of a punch, but Torkoal still managed to survive at 1 HP. At least this got Raihan to use up his one-time heal early on. Sadly, Stone Edge ended up missing the next two turns and Agron was done and out. He'd prove Bronzong ended up being pretty useful here, but sadly, right hand put it to sleep. Arad gave him the opportunity to set up Sunny Day again and fire blast this away. Sizor was out next, only to instantly trigger a shell trap and get blown away. Things weren't looking too good for me. I was on my last Pokemon while right hand basically had his whole team left. 
Not ready to throw in the towel, I sent out Kappa Raja, Dynamaxed, and started spamming Max Knuckle. Thankfully, it did enough damage to avoid triggering another Shell Trap, and I got another free turn of setup while Flygon whipped up a Sandstorm. The Elephant even managed to bulk through an Earthquake. Thank goodness this thing is tanky. My Dynamax was done, and Right Hand still had two more Pokemon, but knowing the AI, first thing Gudra would do is try to set up Rain instead of Attack. Yup. Out that left, just a giant Duraludon. I knew I'd only get one turn to win this. Right Hand got to attack first, and thankfully, we tanked another hit. Then we went for the superpower which successfully one-shot the Dynamax. Woo! Not very enthusiastic, but woo! Right hand thought he had us cornered, but Peeny managed to steal this victory. Now it's time to grab our rusty sword and see who's the stronger of the two brothers, Peeny or Rose. The chairman sets up a sword stance and then instantly wipes her Berserker with a drill run. Knowing that Berserker was faster than Ask Cavalier, I made my next choice based on my team's speed stats and sent out Agron to squish the bug. Ferrothorn also got squished, but its spiky body did hurt us a little bit. The gears? You already know what happens to them. They get squished, Peeny's over here just recording his hydraulic press videos with Rose's team. Unfortunately, the Kaparaja was too big to squish. Bronzong can do much damage, but at least we know that Rose hits that bell, unlike some people watching this video. Sizer was next and literally had nothing useful to contribute, yet somehow it tanked through the Dynamax attacks and a high horsepower, living long enough to land the finishing blow on Rose's last Pokemon. I didn't even have to use Kaparaja for this, I guess Peeny is the stronger of the two, eh? This left us with just a battle for champion, except Peeny's team was severely underleveled. Since I didn't want to spend too much time trying to farm EXP candies, I decided to go back to the Crown Tundra and fight Registeel over and over. The nice thing about this golem is that it will respawn if you knock it out, so it was a nice short loop of do the puzzle, punch the Reggie, level up. Mamma mia! I was supposed to fight this Pokemon with my dear Nia! It's okay, just a little practice to become champion. Speaking of which, it's champion time. Leon immediately goes for the offensive with Aegislash, leaving it wide open for a throat chop. Uh, what part of this is the throat though? Either way, super effective. Haxorus is out next and will be a major problem since it knows Earthquake. I go in with Agron since it has the sturdy ability which guarantees I'll survive at least one turn and get one attack in. I'm gonna need to get more than one attack in. Sizor is slow but at least somewhat bulky enough, although since his attack failed to knock out Haxorus, it means Leon gets to heal it right up. Thankfully, our bug is bulky enough to bring it back down to zero. And with that bullet punch, I also got to do some decent damage to the Dragapult. The Mostly Dragon ended up being too strong for Bronzong to handle, leaving me with just Kappa Raja, who would have to carry me here just like it did in the fight with Right Hand. The only problem being that since Dragapult is part Ghost, I cannot stack attack boost this time with Max Knuckle. Instead, I chose to go for Steel Surge, which also sets up spikes as an entry hazard. Leon reduced my attack even more with a tearful look, while I decided to stack on special defense with Max Quake. By the time the clown comes out, we were out of Dynamax turns. Thankfully, Kappa Raja pushed through its confusion and managed to one-shot the foe. Leon was down to just Charizard and he would likely hit hard. Not only that, but we didn't really have any moves that could do much damage here, meaning that Leon gets to absolutely demolish Peeny in the last round of their battle. Even though it was obvious Peeny couldn't become champion thanks to Nessa, I was really hoping he could pull off some underdog victory here. Sadly, since Peeny's Kaparaja didn't have any useful moves against Leon's Charizard, the odds of winning are basically zero. Had Peeny not retired, it is very likely that Leon would have have snagged the champion title from him personally rather than by default. In all realities, Leon would have become the next champion in Galar. As for Peeny, he decided to go enjoy life a bit, fall in love, raise a kid, go on an adventure. He may have lost the battle for champion, but he is most definitely winning the battle in life. I hope you enjoyed my little excursion as Peeny. If all goes well, the next one of these should be from the Wulu timeline, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Check out the rest of the series if you find this interesting, and I hope to see ya eventually.